In this lesson, you'll learn how to serialise objects in VB.net. I'll be telling you what serialisation is and why we need it, and I'll show you how to serialise and deserialise objects via the JSON format. I'll also briefly show you how not to do it. You'll get the most out of this lesson if you're an experienced programmer and you're already familiar with some object-oriented programming and coding up classes in VB.net. But if not, don't worry, you can still get a sense of what serialisation is all about by watching this video, even if you're a novice. So firstly, what is it? Well, serialisation is the process of converting a data structure, such as an array, or a list, or a dictionary, or a hash table, or indeed the state of a custom object, into a series of bytes, so that the object can be easily saved to secondary storage as a file, or a database, or transmitted across a communication link. Later, the byte stream can be deserialized to create a copy of the original object or data structure. Some programmers use the term marshalling in place of serialization, but there is a subtle difference between the two which I'm not going to go into here. That, as they say, is another story. In this lesson, I'll focus on serializing and deserializing an instance of a class, that is, an object. Why do we need it? Well, being able to save the state of an object when an application shuts down, for example, is important if you want the data back again when you run the application later. Furthermore, you may want to copy data between different types of application, perhaps across a network. Serialization provides a standard data format in which data can be transmitted. Serialised data have the advantage of being independent of the computer architecture they were created on, and the programming language used to generate them. There is, of course, a downside to serialization. One of the cornerstone features of object-oriented programming is encapsulation. Object data are hidden and protected from outside interference. Arguably, serialization breaks this protection to some extent, Serialised data can of course be encrypted, but then perhaps this defeats the whole point of serialization. In order for different applications to interoperate, they need to understand each other's serialization formats. I'm going to start with the serialization facilities built into .NET, but don't get too attached to them, because then I'm going to tell you why you should not use them. I've already created a Windows Forms app, and I'm going to start by writing a class and then creating an object from it, something to serialise. I'm writing the class here rather than inside a class library, really just for convenience, but everything will work in the same way if I've written the code inside a class library, as long as I reference it properly. This is a person class, I'm going to store information about a person, and my class has three properties, first name, last name, and gender. I'm being a bit lazy here, I'm coding them up as public variables. If I was writing an application, I'd be using property procedures instead, but this will be fine. I'm also going to put a method inside the class. And it's just a simple little method, which I've implemented as a function, and it returns a string, hi. Not particularly realistic, I know, but it will help me to illustrate what I want to show you. I'm going to write another class now, which inherits from this class. And to make sure that my employee class has all of the methods and properties of the person, I use the inherits keyword. So there are my classes. Now I'm going to create an object from the employee class. I'll do that back in the form when the button is clicked. Now let's assign some values to those properties. And I'll finish with a line of code, just to show that I've actually set the values of those properties. And let's make sure it's working. No problems there. 
Now, in order to serialize my employee object using the facilities built into VB.NET, I need to import a couple of libraries, like this. I'm also going to need something called a binary formatter. Later, I'll be using a stream writer and a stream reader, so I'm going to import the system.io library as well. System.input.output Before I do anything else, I need to make sure that the object can indeed be serialised. I need to add a declarative tag to my class definition to indicate that any object created from it is serializable, and I can do it like this. Indeed, because I'm working with an employee object which inherits from the person class, I need to do the same for the employee object as well. So let's go ahead and serialize an employee object. I'm going to create a file stream object. I'm passing it the name and path of the file which I want to create. And the second parameter is called the file mode, which basically says I want to create a file rather than append data to an existing file. Now I'm going to create a binary formatter object. And to serialize the object, I call the serialize method of the binary formatter, like this. I pass it the file stream, and of course the object which I want to serialize not forgetting to close the file stream when I'm finished. Now let me just show you, I've already created a folder on my D drive called Delmi. I've called it Delmi to remind myself to delete it later on. If we take a look at it, you can see it's an empty folder. There's nothing in there yet. So I'll run the program. That's the message box which I had earlier. And if I check the folder again, there's a new text file in there. Let's take a look at it. Well, there's various control information in there, but I can also see some data in there as well. Now let's deserialize the file. Let's pull the data back into this application and use them to set the properties of a new employee object. I'm declaring and instantiating the employee object in one line. Normally, I like to separate the two so I can create an instance of the object as late as possible, but for the purposes of demonstration, this is absolutely fine. Of course, my employee object, emp2, doesn't have any data inside it yet. I haven't set any property values. Now let's create a new file stream. And I'm using a file mode of open this time because I want to open an existing file. I need a binary formatter, and I'm going to call the deserialize method of the binary formatter, like this, passing it the file stream object. Close the file stream, and then I'm going to use a message box just to make sure it has actually worked. I'm outputting the property values of emp2 this time. I don't need to create the original employee object again. The data are in the file. OK, let's see what happens. So there we go. I've deserialized the text file and I've used the data in the file to populate the employee object called emp2. And I'm outputting those data onto the screen. That is how you use the serialize method and the deserialize method of a binary formatter. But I came across something rather recently which I think I need to show you. This is a page on one of Microsoft's websites and notice it says warning. The binary formatter type is dangerous and is not recommended for data processing. Applications should stop using the binary formatter as soon as possible even if they believe the data they're processing to be trustworthy. Binary formatter is insecure and cannot be made secure. If you read the page, it talks about how the binary formatter leaves a door open for a denial-of-service attack. There's more information if you want to look into it. 
This page is telling us that the serialize and deserialize methods of the binary formatter are now obsolete. Don't use them. Reading on, you can see that the recommended action is to stop using the binary formatter in your code and instead consider using the JSON serializer or the XML serializer. So I'm now going to show you how to use the JSON serializer. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about JSON. In fact, let me show you. On this website, you can get access to Google's Vision AI application programming interface, which allows you to write your own applications which use artificial intelligence to perform image recognition. I can test it on this website. I'm going to upload an image. And after a few seconds, I've got various information which the artificial intelligence derived from that image. You can see it's recognised four faces in the image, and for each of those faces, I can get some sense of their emotion. Face one is showing joy. Face four is wearing headwear. I think that's the policeman in the background. And if we look at objects, there's a very high chance there's a person, and a chair, and an umbrella. I've been using the Image Recognition API to build a cat flap, which can tell whether my cat has got a mouse or a bird in its mouth before it lets it in. That's another story, but one of these days I hope to be able to show you a video on how I did it. It's still in the prototype stage. What I really wanted to show you here is that all of this information about the image can be consumed in JSON format. So if you're writing an application which is going to use this image recognition data, it can be transferred to your application using JSON. JSON is the JavaScript object notation. It was originally developed for JavaScript, and in fact the format of JSON data looks very much like JavaScript class code. It's the standard for exchanging and transmitting data, so it's well worth getting to know. If I want to serialize my object data in JSON format, there's nothing built into vb.net to do this. I need to install some extra libraries. And I can get these from a third party, not Microsoft, but Newtonsoft. This is their website, and they've written the libraries I need and made them open source, so I can download them for free. It's interesting that Microsoft haven't taken this on board themselves. They're using a third party to create this code. But I suppose that's their prerogative. I've got options to download the libraries I need here. I can even get the source code, as I said, it's open source. When I click on these options, I can pull down zip files, or I'm being recommended here to use the package management window within .NET. These libraries are available as a so-called NuGet package. This is how I install them. Right-click in the Solution Explorer, Manage NuGet Packages, or perhaps it's pronounced Nugget, I'm not quite sure. I don't have any installed at the moment, so I'm going to Browse. And right at the top of the list is the one I need. Newtonsoft JSON. Select the package, click install, confirm, and that is that. If I take a look at my references, I can see there's a new one here, Newtonsoft JSON. So how do we use it? First of all, I need to import the JSON library. Imports newtonsoft.json. I'm going to start by simply writing the data from the object into a string in JSON format. I'm calling the serialize object method of the JSON convert class. I'm passing it the object which I want to serialize. And I'm also saying something about how I want the JSON data formatted. I'd like it indented. Let's take a look at the string. There's my object data in JSON format. Of course, any methods within the class are ignored. They've got nothing to do with the data. By the way, 
There's no need for me to put serializable in front of each class definition. I can get rid of those. It still works. OK, this time I'm going to write the object to a JSON string and then I'm going to write the JSON string to a file. So I'm not going to be needing these lines of code. I need to check now that the file has actually been created. There's person.json. If I double click it, it's opening it up inside Visual Studio. Notice how the employee properties are coming first, followed by the person properties. Remember, my employee class inherits from person. Alternatively, I could write my object data directly to a file via a JSON string using a stream writer. The parameter true specifies that I want to append data to an existing file. I talked about the stream writer and the stream reader in a previous video. Now I need a serializer object and I'll use it to serialize the object and write the data to disk using a stream writer, like this. Just to prove this is working properly, I'm going to remove the existing file first. Let's clean this folder out. Run the code. And there's my new JSON file. Let's open it up with Notepad++ this time, just for a change. Notice I didn't specify that I wanted the data indented this time. So what about working in the other direction? How do I deserialize JSON data? I'll start by deserializing a string. Let's bring this code back to life first of all. And now I'm going to create a new employee object called emp2. And I'll populate the properties with JSON data by calling the deserialize object method of the JSON convert class. This method wants two parameters. It wants the string containing the JSON data and it wants the type of this employee object. Now I can do this in a few different ways, but this is my preferred way of doing it. I'm giving it the name of the object and then I'm calling get type, which will give me its type, in other words, employee. If you play around with this, you'll find you can't just write employee here. Also, if you look this up online, you'll see there's another common way of specifying these parameters. For example, you might see this. Both of these two lines do exactly the same thing. Personally, I find this rather clumsy and unintuitive. OK, and to prove it's worked, I'll output the property values of my emp2 object. I won't be needing this. So there's the string data, which is in JSON format. That's coming from this message box statement. And here are the data in my emp2 object, which were put in there by deserializing that string. Alternatively, I might want to deserialize some JSON from a file into a new object. And I can do that like this. I'm using a stream reader this time. All I need to give it is the name of the file which I want to read. I need a JSON serializer object. And I'm going to call its deserialize method. Give it the name of the stream reader and the type of my target employee object. And remember to close the stream reader, of course. OK, so there's my original employee object. I've already run the code which writes this data out in JSON format to a text file, so now I'm going to read it back in. And there you can see the data that are now inside emp2. Now I want to finish off by showing you how I can serialize the data within an object conditionally. To do this I need to write a little bit of extra code inside the class. 
Let's say, for example, I only want to serialise the salary of an employee if it's greater than or equal to £50,000. I'm going to write a new method within my employee class that looks like this. Public function should serialise salary. So I've got the name of the property here and I've prefixed it with should serialise and it's a function which will return a true or a false depending on what the salary is. So if the salary is less than £50,000 this function will return false and that will prevent the salary data from being serialised. If on the other hand the function returns true then the salary will be serialised. By the way, rather than writing an if block like this, I could have written this. This expression will evaluate to true if the salary is greater than or equal to £50,000 and it will evaluate to false if it isn't. I prefer my code to be a little bit more explicit. So let's see what happens. I'm going to get rid of the original file And we'll write that data out to a new JSON file. But I'm going to make the salary £45,000. There's my JSON data, but you can see there's no salary in there. If the salary is £65,000, on the other hand, the data have been written into that file. Notice the data have been appended to the existing file because that's what I told the stream writer to do. So there you have it. Object serialization and deserialization via the JSON format.